Good morning. So this is going to be our statistics and flex MLS class. We are going to cover about seven different stats reports. This is being recorded, so you will be able to watch it on YouTube later. There is a handout that was posted in the chat. If you have any questions, this is basically just the takeaways on what we're going to cover. I don't expect this to go two hours just because we have a small class and it's not hands-on like I usually do. So we'll probably do it. It would probably take more than an hour, but definitely not two. Okay, so we are going to cover what I call the Magnificent Seven. These are the probably the seven most popular, seven most common stat reports that you see inside of Flex MLS. So what we're going to do is go through them one by one. If you have any questions, just type them into the chat panel and I will answer it. It's easier to have everyone muted just so I can go through the class, but also because this is being recorded, the uh, Verbal questions are a little harder to handle. Okay, so the first one that we're going to cover is we're going to cover summary statistics. Now, the easiest way to get summary statistics, and if you see in the chat panel, you download the handout, it shows you the instructions of everything we're going to talk about, how to get to these different stats reports, if you don't remember. But what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our quick launch bar. And if you know, in my classes, I always like to use this. I'm going to type in the letters INV because what I'm looking for is the inventory and production report right here. So I'm going to pull up the inventory and production report. Click on that. And you'll notice that there are a bunch of options. But what I'm going to focus on is I'm going to focus on the top one called summary statistics. Now, summary statistics is, is great if you just want to see some raw numbers and get some things like meeting list price or like ratio of sold price to original list price. It's just a it's a basic, basic stat. So I'm going to make sure that this is selected. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to click on run report. So when I do this, it gives me some options for the report generation. I can do all property types. I'm just going to keep it simple and we're just going to do residential. And I'm going to scroll down, and you'll notice that if you want to do it for bedrooms or bathrooms or for a certain area, you can do it this way. But this report is meant for just seeing numbers. There's no graphical interface here. You're not going to see some nice lines like you would see in the other stats reports. So this is just kind of a good idea to see what's going on. So the key thing here is under report chosen statistical summary, member is there by default, meaning me. What I want to do is I want to switch it to MLS so I see all the stats for the entire MLS. So I'm going to switch it to MLS right here. And you'll notice that it gives me a begin date and an end date. Let's run this for all of last year. So 1 1 20, 22. And then I'm going to come back and run it again for everything since the beginning of this year. And then let's do 12 31 20, 22. So again, the key things here is I decide what property types I want up at the top. And then I'm going to scroll down and what I'm make sure that I select these statistics types of MLS, give it a date range, and I'm going to click on next. Give it a second to load. And you'll notice it tells me what parameters I've done and it, it'll give me the stats. So I'm actually just going to zoom in a little bit to show you. So we see all the sold residential units last year, 6,941. We see the median list price of 250,000. Now, what I really like about this one is I like the stats reports that show me the median values. So the median list price is 250 because then it'll also show the average. And the average is obviously quite a bit higher. I prefer to use the median values just because things for like days on market or prices you know, you have certain listings that throw off the average. So the median really gives you a better idea of what's going on. We see the median sole price, average sole price. And so we see the sole price, the list price, and then the sole price for the original list price ratio. So this is really cool because you'll see that this is when people listed it. This is what they got from the original. But this would be, sorry, this is the original. This would be the when it goes pending. So you'll notice a difference of basically almost 4% because what they originally listed it as and when the final sold price, there is that difference. 
So I, I like to look at this because this gives you a good idea of how much prices have dropped from when it was listed versus when it was sold. But then you'll also notice that if it was listed and sold on the same side, you see 97% versus if it had two different brokers the, on the buyer's agent and then on the listing side, then you see 96. So it's just a nice breakdown. Most people, there's brokers on both sides. There's not dual agency. But it just gives you some nice information. You see the days on market, the cumulative days on market. But this one doesn't give me a median days on market. So that's why I do like to go into other stats reports. But just gives you some interesting information, all the new listings, everything that's expired, everything that was active in that entire time. So almost 9,000 properties were active during 2022. So just basic number crunching. You could always print this off if you want. But we're going to do this one more time. So we're going to go to inventory, inventory and production. Again, you'll notice that I use the quick launch for just about everything. So we're going to type an INV. Don't just click on the first thing that you see. Make sure you find the section that you want. I'm going to do inventory and production. Summary statistics. I'll run the report. And we'll just stick with residential again. And like I said before, if you really want to get an idea of what's going on, say, the city of Union or a certain area, you can do that. But I personally like to use the market summary report when I start doing individual locations. The one really cool thing about here, though, is if you were to do, say, like city of Union. And then I do Florence as well. I can do multiple cities here or multiple areas, whereas like the market summary report only allows you to do one thing. So that one thing could be a city, an area, or even a map shape, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But this does allow you to do for multiple options for like city or county. So if you really just want to do this, and actually let's do that. Not Benton, sorry. I used to live in Benton in Iowa. We're going to do Kenton County. We're going to do Campbell County. And we're going to do Boone County. So let's, we have 12 counties in our market area. Let's just keep it limited to three. Go down. And again, the key thing here is statistic typed MLS. If I'm just doing it for member, that's only what I sold, what I did. So let's change this to 1-1-20-23. And let's just run it till this current day. So again, what I did is I decided to keep residential. Went on here, we're doing the three main counties where the most of the population is. And then we're going to do MLS and decide our date range. Or what we could do is we could do, say, 331. Some people like to run this quarterly, so we'll do it quarterly and click on Next. Give it a second to run. And so we have residential for the three property types. So what we see since the beginning of this year, sold 1,111. We see the median list price, days on market. So remember, we saw about in the 20s, 25 or so, the days on market are starting to go up. The median sold price went up as well, which is expected. And then we see the sold price and then the sold price versus the original list price ratio. And so now we see this is actually dropping from last year. So the market is starting to cool a little bit. Days on market are going up and also people are not getting 100% of what they're asking for, which is expected when the market starts to cool. But the prices are going back up. So having run stats, I know that the market, it peaked in November, it started to drop and then it turned around this in March. So that is what I expected to see. And again, you can see the breakdown of the different things if you're curious some people really like to, to dive into stats, do this you know, every quarter or every year to get an idea. But the flaw with this summary stats is it's, again, it's just numbers. If you're very good with stats and you want to bring this in these numbers and plug them into an Excel spreadsheet or something, you can do that. But we have other stat reports that we can use that will give us more of a graphical look. Otherwise, I could just click on print right here. And if I want to print this, that oh, looks like it just gives me an extra page. I gotta switch it to landscape if that works better. There you go. But this is this is flex mostly. These are the old stats reports. They're gradually updating the look and the, the interface so to be more modern. Any questions on the summary stats report? Just type them into the chat panel. 
And again, what I talk about in this class is going to be on the handout with the steps to repeat it and like it'll show you some graphics. So everything you learned today, you should be able to see on the on your handout. So that was the summary statistics report. Now, the next one we're going to go to is called saturation analysis. It is what is called the ranking report. Why it's not called the ranking report, Influx, I don't know. I've requested that from them, but uh, they're not going to do it. But we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to type in INV and go to inventory and production. All I'm doing by going up here is in menu, I could try to look here. And so inventory and production, it's right here. But I find it's a lot easier once you know things are what they're called, just to use the quick launch to pull it up. So we're going to do inventory and production, and this time, instead of summary stats, we're going to do saturation analysis, and it says market share report. But again, this is the ranking report if you're taking notes at home. So we're going to click on run report, and on the handout, I actually explain everything and show you what options you should choose, but uh, I'll just walk you through this. So let's keep with residential, but again, you could do land or something else if you want to do. Now, for the ranking report, some people may want to do certain counties or cities or areas to see like, hey, who's the top agent in, say, Union or in Florence? You can do that. Uh, we're just going to keep it really generic and we're going to scroll all the way down. And this is the key section right here that I have to pay close attention to. Because like the last one, if I just run for member, it's just going to run it for my stats. What I'm looking for is the market share option right here. This is how you actually tell Flex you want to do a ranking report. So I'm going to select the market share. And we're going to run this one twice like we did the last report. We're going to run it for all of last year. So 1-1-2022. And then I'm going to do 12 31 2022 for all of last year. And I'm going to click on next. Now, this one doesn't go straight to the stats. We have to go through a few more steps. So pay close attention to what we're doing. Now, rank members is default, which is what I want. But if you were curious about different offices or companies or even the members in a specific office, you want to see who's the top seller in a certain branch, you can do that. Now, you'll notice offices and companies. The reason that there's two is you may have an office like, say, a Huff, but Huff has multiple locations. So if you run it by office, it would have the different Huff office locations separate where if you run it by company, it would run all the huffs together. And the reason you have companies and offices as an option together is there are some boutiques that are one office, but they sell enough to be really considered a company. So you really get to rank them that way. And the members and offices, again, to see if where a person is located in a certain office. But we're just going to do rank members and click on use this selection. Now here. What you can do is you can decide number or dollar volume. So do you want to sort it by the number of sales or by the dollar volume? Personal preference, I like to do dollar volume. I'm going to keep sold. Now, the key thing here is you're going to want to do listing or selling members. If you're on either side of the transaction, you want to see stats. Not listing and selling members. That means the dual agency. You have both sides. So listing or selling members. And it says calculate numbers and volume using sides. That is the default. What that means is if you have a listing agent and you have a, the buyer's agent, they each get one sale. If you're using sides, if you have a listing agent and a co-listing agent, they each would get half a sale. So it depends on usually what happens is people will run this with sides and they'll run it without sides and then see which gives them the higher ranking and then use that. So personal preference one thing I like to do is include last year's calculations just to see where people ranked the previous year. So in 2021, and I'm actually going to set this for 2000. We have currently about 1900 MLS members. Not everyone is sold, but I always like to go higher just to see, because if you just do a hundred and you only see a hundred people come back in the results, I want to see everyone that has sold something this in the last year. So everything looks good, and I'm going to click on. Okay, so the next one that we're going to cover is we're going to cover the broker inventory report. Now, the broker inventory report, 
I'm not going to show actual brokerage with stats. I'm just going to show you what it, you would see at the Northern Kentucky. Again, I don't want to be showing you someone else's production, but I'm going to show you how we can run this. So this one, same thing. This is in the inventory and production reports, just so we're aware of it. We see it's right here, but I want to make sure that we know that if we type an INV or any other menu name down here, it will pull it up. Like if I were to type in saved for save searches, I could pull that up here. Now I see my save searches. So I'm just going to do INV, inventory and production. So this is another stat report we want to look at, which is the broker inventory. Click on broker inventory, and I'm going to run this report. Now, if you have office level access, you're going to see everyone in the office. If you don't, then you're just going to see your own inventory when you run it. Now, I have God mode, so I see basically everything. So I'm just going to show you, let's do the range for just the beginning of this year. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click inside this box, start typing Northern Kentucky, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it up for the MLS. Uh, everyone who is part of the MLS for our staff is a member just like you. We have no production, but I just want to show you what we're doing. So we'd make sure we have the office unless yours is already selected. I'm fine with the standard report totals. This is the kind of thing that when you do these stats reports, you have the different options. Run it a few different ways. Decide which way you want to see it and just in your notes or your handout, make a note for it. So you're not going to do this every day. If you only do this every couple months, make sure you make notes so then you remember what to select so you can replicate your, your values. I'm going to click on next. Now, again, if you have office level access, you should see everyone in the office. Otherwise, you would just see yourself. So you, I could select myself or I'm just going to include all the members. Click on next. So you're going to notice that there is no actual stats here because we are staff. We haven't sold anything, but I just want to show you what this does. This will show you each member stats if you have that broker load and it'll show all the different sides. This is where it's really cool is it'll actually show you the breakdowns of the sides. If you're curious, like you want to count up your production and you're not quite sure how is this actually getting figured out? You'll have numbers here and it'll actually count up your sides by total. So again, this would be for every single person unless you're just running it for yourself. And then if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, You'll see your brokerage stats, and it'll actually compare it against the MLS as a whole, and it'll show you what percentage you have of the MLS. So if you have like a really high producing office, you can see, well, are we 2%? Are we 1% of the entire MLS totals? And we saw a couple teams before that just the individual teams had had a couple percentage of the of this production stats. So again, I can't really show you anything here. If we were in a classroom, I'd be able to be a little more obvious about it. But because this is recorded and going on YouTube, I need to be careful on what I display. So I just want to make sure you know how to do this yourself. Do it one more time. INV. We're going to do inventory and production right here. Broker inventory. And if you're ever curious, it'll actually tell you what you're looking for. And there's always a option for help and then help with this page. And it might give you some more additional information about what these different stat reports do. But we're just gonna do broker inventory, click on run report. And again, you are going to see different options than I am, depending on what broker world you have, if you get to see everything in the office or if you just see yourself. So don't pay too much attention to this if it doesn't make sense to you. The key things is just make sure you have your office selected. It's probably going to be a drop down for you. And I'm just going to make sure I have my North Kentucky. And... Maybe this time I won't do it with sides just to show you a different look. We're going to click on next. You would select yourself unless you have that office broker load. I'm just going to do all my members. Click on next. And now instead of sides, it actually shows me the sales breakdown instead. So personal preference, however you want to do it. 
we would scroll down and then at the bottom, you would see the actual breakdown for the brokerage stats. But really what you want to focus is on is the individual members. Look at, and you can see how everything is calculated. So this would be a number and this would actually be a dollar value and it will show you the address of the property. So I do recommend running this one after this class, just so you see how it works and it is fresh for you. Any questions about the broker inventory report? If you have any questions, just type them into the chat panel. Okay, so at the rate we're going, we probably won't be much longer than an hour. So nice short webinar. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is the market summary report. And I find that this is the most popular report and it provides you some pretty good stats. So you'll notice that I have the market summary right here because what I did is I starred it so that it shows up and now it's over here. So I like to put my most popular menu items up here, the things that I use regularly. Otherwise, I can just use the quick launch, type in the word market. Don't click the first thing that you see, because again, that might not be what you want. Make sure you find what you're looking for. So I'm looking for market summary right here. So the market summary report, what it does is it goes back one year and it gives you things like number of listings, listing prices, absorption rate in months, sold list ratio, days on market, price volume. And then if you scroll down, it actually gives you some summary stats, similar to this summary stats report that we did. But I really like about this is it's got median. And then it does a breakdown for sold listings, pending listings based on price ranges, but it also it adds them up. Then active listings and then our new listings. So this is really interesting. If I look at it, say number of listings, and if I hover over it, it'll actually tell me. So back in November, we had 916 active listings. Shows me the new, the pended. And if I hover over the different things, it'll the dark font will show me that wine value. And then the grade font will show it everything for that month. Now you'll notice a couple of different things for these gadgets. There's going to have a question mark, which right here, I always talk about my classes, watch your mouse behavior. The arrow is just the default, but if it switches to the index finger, it means you can do something with it. If I click on it, it'll give me a pop-up. But the help text says information about the number of listings charts. So it actually explain what is going on here. Now, the reason this is important is you'll notice that active listings, it does a snapshot on the 15th of the month. And the reason this is important is because active listings are constantly changing. We know in new, in the month of March, you have maybe you have 50 new listings. Well, with active, how do you calculate? Because the listings are always constantly changing. So the reason this is important is we will notice that in this last month, new listings are 696, but active are 658. And you're like, you're thinking, how do we have more new listings than active listings? because this was calculated in the middle of the month, things are going so quickly, which we will notice right here, the absorption rate, that's why you can have this discrepancy. So if you're, you're curious, like how things are calculated, using that question mark for the different gadgets will tell you definitions for this. And then you see this wrench, same thing, watch your mouse behavior, gives me the index finger, but the hover text says customize this chart. So if I click on it, I can decide what things I want to see in this actual chart. So listing price, the same thing. Question mark defines everything for me. And then the wrench will let me decide what I want to see on there. Absorption rate. I'm like, well, well, what's the absorption rate? I'm not sure how that's defined. So we go to the here and it shows us the the rate of current inventory. So absorption rate is very similar to months in inventory. They're just calculated a little bit differently. So that's why you can see difference between the different values. But basically absorption rate is showing you if it's a seller's market or not, or if it's a buyer's market. A seller's market is generally considered anything below five months. A neutral market is about five to six months. And then a buyer's market is generally considered six months and above. So we've been in a really strong seller's market for years now, 
And it's starting to get hot again because of the spring season. There's not a lot of inventory. And one of the reasons inventory is so low is because people aren't listing their properties because the mortgage rates are too high. They're locked in at a low percent. So there are houses right now, there's inventory, but it's not getting put on the market. So, you know, we have been building, but because people can't, don't want to get out of their two and a half, three percent and go to 6% or higher, they're just not listing. So we notice inventory is good. The absorption rate is going down. Sold list ratio. So we see, we saw this before on our summary stats, but this gives us a nice graphical interface. And we noticed last year about this time, people were actually getting more for what they were asking. Days on market, this is average CDOM and average DOM. Go here. Those are my only two options on this graph. But if I scroll down, I actually have the median. I prefer the median information because like, look at the difference. We have 40, but nine. Some houses are staying on the market too long. And so they're raising the average where the median shows you just how quickly things are going. Now, last year it was insane, but it still is really, really low. And then we have the price volume. And if I go to here, click on this, I have an option to do different volumes. Go down, look at our summer stats. We see some interesting stuff like year over year up 6%, almost 7%. Absorption rate, again, really, really low, but it was low last year as well. So this is really fascinating, but the, the problem with looking at this graph and doing the entire MLS was what we're doing is this is encompassing 12 different counties. And while, again, fascinating, you really want to get granular if you want to get some information about, say, just the city of Florence or Kenton County. This stuff is interesting, but if you want to really provide your clients some more valuable stats and say a listing presentation, let's get more granular. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and click on customize. And again, we see that index finger and we see some help text. So don't be afraid of your mouse when you're, there's so much functionality and flex that's not visible at first glance. So watch, watch, watch what your mouse does. So we're going to go to customize and I'm looking for new locations. Right now, it just says residential. So this is telling me that this is everything in the MLS, all 12 counties. So we're gonna go to new location. And I click inside this new location box and you'll notice that there's a pop-up. These aren't your only options. These are just things that have been run recently. And you'll also notice that my map overlays, I've drawn a bunch of map shapes during my classes. These map shapes you can use as well. Pay very close attention to this explanation. I talked about before in summer stats, you can do multiple locations. Well, here you can only do one. So watch what happens. I do triple crown and then I do triple crown country club. It only allows me to do one location. So the reason that's a problem is if I want to do this across multiple subdivisions, counties, that kind of thing, I can't do it by selecting here. But what I can do is you see the map overlays. If I draw a map shape that encompasses multiple things, I can use that because it's one location. I drew a map shape for Hempshire and Hempstead encompassing both those subdivisions. It's one location. I can use this and then run stats for those two subdivisions combined. So again, if the one thing is not what you're looking for, you're looking for a specific area in Southern Covington that an area or a zip code or something doesn't work for you, you can draw a map shape for that. And uh, we'll do that in just a little bit as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep this simple. We're gonna do, let's do Covington. And so when I type in Covington, I see the city of Covington right here. I'm actually gonna zoom out just a little bit, just so you see, if you're not finding what you're looking for, you can always do the show all and it will show. There's so many subdivisions with the name of Covington. That's why it might not be obvious. So let's do the city of Covington. And again, I'm just selecting one thing, report date. It has the last full month you can run this. Now you'll notice you could run this back, you know, back in 2016. If you have a client that's convinced, well, the market was like this back then, you can actually run stats for that. So we're just gonna do March, 2023, run this. And so we see, okay, let's take a look at prices. So the active meeting list price is higher in Covington than the entire MLS. Our absorption rate is kind of bouncing around. Well, I, if I remember from our entire MLS, we kind of did this 
where this one's kind of just, it's going back up. This is why it's important, important to get granular because people really weren't getting what they were asking for. Look at 92% in February. Now this is starting to go back up. Now, the reason this is important is when you're pricing a home, you're doing a CMA, you can use these stats to kind of let your client know, well, if we listed at this, in this area, this is what people are getting when they're, what they're asking for. So it might be 92, 95%. You can actually show the stats to your client. Days on market have kind of bounced around and then they're dropping again. So we see, we'll look at the median CDOMs, actually five, I believe it was nine for the entire MLS and the average is 24 where we were looking at 40. And look, no change in the average cumulative days on market. So median sale price, 195. So this is actually up 19%, but the average is down. So it looks like people are putting a lot of lower end properties, hence the 195. And these are what's going really, really fast. These could be flips that people purchased over the summer. So if you work that area, you're, you're going to have a better idea. But this really is cool at the granular level because, again, if we run it for the entire MLS, we're not getting necessarily great data. Okay, so let's do this one more time. We're gonna go to customize. Let's do new location. Let's do Florence. I'm currently in Florence. Let's see what Florence looks like. So I could do the area of Florence or do a city. I'm gonna do the area and we're gonna click on search. Okay, so we see that the listings have kind of bounced around. Absorption rate. Now look at the absorption rate in Florence. Things are moving in less than a month, which basically means they're not moving less than a month, but in less than a, in half a month, if there was no new inventory, all the inventory would dry up in half a month in Florence. And so we see the ratios have kind of bounced around, but they're still pretty high, 98, 99%. So things are moving fast and they're also basically getting what they're asking for. And if we go down, we see again, look at the median. So the average is low, but look at the median, four. So if you list something, in Florence, and it's priced right, it's going to go in a few days. And look, look at actually the mean sales price. It's dropped year over year. So again, why that is, if you know the market in that area, you'll have a better idea. But this does give you a great idea of what's going on in Florence. And I talked about map shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a quick search. And I'm going to do a super simple map shape, just so you see how this works. And so you might not have an area that encompasses what you're looking for. So this freeform polygon, what I'm going to do is, uh, let me actually stop that. Let me zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to give it a click on it. And every time I click on it, it gives it a point. So again, I'm going super fast just to show you how this works. And then when I'm done, I'm going to stop moving my mouse and I'm going to double click. So I've drawn this map shape. So this could, there could be an area or subdivision that encompasses or multiple things, but this is going across multiple things. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to save this shape. And I'm just going to call it north of 275 uh, by river. You know, again, this isn't exactly everything north of 275. But just going to get it, give it a name. I'm going to save it to a map overlay. And I have my existing overlays or my new overlays. I'm just going to add this to my favorite neighborhoods. I cover this in the Best of Flex MLS class more in detail. But this shape, I want to save it. So this shape has been saved and I can use it in the future, but also I can use it for that stats report. So let's do the market summary again. And then we're going to do go to customize, new location. That shape that I just drew right here, north of 275 by river, it has all that stuff. Now, my areas or whatever I have may not encompass, may not be an exact. So I drew that kind of arbitrary shape just to show you. You can draw a shape for anything. Now, if it's really small, you may not get good stats. But let's just do north of 275 by river. And I'm going to click on search. So I want to see everything that sold, everything that happened in that, that map shape over the last year. Look at what we see on absorption rate. This is why getting granular is important. 
absorption rate is much higher in that location. Now, it could just be because there's no, you know, people aren't looking to buy there. So absorption rate's higher, but look at the prices. This is what's interesting. They're actually, things are taking longer to sell, but the ratio is very, very close. Prices have actually dropped. And with days on market, way up there, price volume is kind of all over the place. So we see absorption rates high. Our average and median is closer than the other stuff that we've seen, but there's a huge change in the market there. But look at the, the sale price is actually up. So this is just a really kind of crazy location in Northern Kentucky. But if I were to run this for the 12 counties, I'm not going to see this kind of granular data. So drawing a map shape that's big enough to encompass things makes a lot of sense. Because I did a map shape for customized new location. I did one for Hampshire and Hempstead. And you'll notice I can't find it because it only shows me certain options. So if I start typing it, I see that I have this map shape. We're going to run this one. Now, again, you may have missing data points if there's just nothing there. So that's why if you get really, really small, you may not get good data. And so we just, we don't see good data because we just don't have enough sales. That's why if you get too granular, it doesn't look good. But so I've done some different shapes. I've done some different locations. I did that under new location. If I go under previous locations right here, I see everything that I've run. And what I can do is I can actually star it. So it says add to favorites. I'll star a couple of the ones that I like to use. And if I go to customize favorite locations, here are all my favorite locations. And you'll notice that these ones say January because I ran these in February in my first stats class. So it just has the last month you ran it. You could just update it to say March and then run it again for Hebron. And again, see the stats. Nice graphical interface, but I always do like to come down here. And so look at the median sale price is actually up 22% in Hebron. And look at the, you know, huge difference in days of market. So this is the market summary report. We can export the data, which is really cool. I always export all downloadable data. And this is going to create a CSV file, which I can bring into Excel. And it's all here. And so if you want to use your own stats reports or, you know, track things, this is really cool. Or maybe you have a client who really is tech savvy and they want to play around with the numbers. You can also send that to them. You could email it to your client or otherwise you could print it. So if I go to print and then do the print summary, there we go. I could do a portrait or a landscape. And then here are the stats. So I always like to print to PDF. So then I actually have the PDF on my computer and I can mail that as opposed to just printing to an actual printer. So that is the market summary report. The limitations on the market summary report, like I said before, is one location, either a city, a state, or a county, a zip, an area. But you can get around that in the new location section by drawing a map shape that encompasses whatever it is that you want to do. We did the north of 275 by river, and then I was able to include multiple things. So market summary is just one year. But you could decide if I wanted to run this for, say, 2018, and let's do this for Covington. Let's see what, and I'll do the area of K01 this time. Let's see what it was like back in 2018. So if we go down here, look at those prices. Very, very different. Than, so at least it looks like double since uh, if we would run it for this last year. So, okay, that's the market summary report. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually do a statistical CMA. I cover this in my CMA class, but I find a lot of people really like this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick search right here. I'm going to do a quick search. And what I'm going to do is let's decide, let's do an area of, I'm going to do, Hmm. Let's do Ellesmere and Erlanger. 
I'm gonna see how many results. So the key thing about a statistical CMA is that you don't want to use any statuses. No statuses are selected because we're gonna be looking at breakdowns for stuff. So I'm gonna check stat uncheck status. And so we see a lot of results. So I'll uncheck status, then I'm gonna do sold, and we're just gonna do 365. So we're gonna run this for the last year. But what we could do is for the last year, the last three months, the last six months. Now, if it's a really, really hot market, you wanna might want to do it for just the last three months. I'm actually gonna switch just to six months and see if we get some good stats. So do it for six months. So I got more than 150 results, which is good because you can't do a full CMA or a quick CMA with more than 150, but the statistical 150 is good. So we're gonna go up to CMA. Now I do have the option to do a one line, but what I'm looking for is all use all results. So what we're gonna do is we're just really gonna see a breakdown for the last six months of what's going on in Ellesmere Erlanger. So to statistical CMA, this right here is basically for number crunching. This is, these are our raw stats, but what's really cool about this is we're gonna click on next. And what we wanna focus on is this group, this statistical CMA by. Now, if you're curious on how appraisers do the Fannie Mae Tineform C, this is it right here. But this is the key about the statistical CMA. And don't worry, I explain all of this in the handout. What you want to do is you want to choose a field that makes sense, that breaks things down. So bedrooms make sense. What is the price for two bedrooms or three bedrooms or four bedrooms in the last six months? If you just want some raw numbers, this is really cool. So we're going to do bedrooms. And I always like to include median calculations if I can, just because again, averages throw things off. And I can click view or download, but we're going to click on view. So what this is going to do is, so for those 150 plus solds in the last six months in that area, this will show us the breakdown. So we have two bedrooms, three bedrooms, four and five. Now with five, there's only one listing, so not statistically significant. But if you're really curious about Okay, for two bedrooms, the median sold price is 170. Well, for three bedrooms, it's 210. And then for four, it's 266. And then we'll actually see the, the ratios, the medians, 99. So basically getting where they're asking, these, these are the living areas. So if you are looking to put a house on the market, you know, you can do a CMA, you can check all the websites, see what they're pricing it at. But if you just kind of want to get an idea, okay, my client is looking to buy or list a three-bedroom house in that area, this is what the median stats are saying. So to give you an idea of what's going on. And then the price per square footage is here, days on market. So it's just really interesting. And you'll see the actual parameters that you're looking for right here. So this shows me four bedrooms. Well, what about if I want to do this for, say, buyer financing. Click on view. Okay, so we see the median sold price for FHA 210 versus conventional is basically the same, but obviously for cash, it is lower because people are happy to take cash and then the VA. So however you want to run these, they might give you some important stats when you're dealing with clients, you want to present some information to them. Let's try it for garage spaces. Click on view. And so this shows me for the different garage spaces. Now, depending if there's enough listings to come back, you may not really have any good information, but this is just raw number crunching. And sometimes you're dealing with clients. Again, they just, they want to see numbers. So you're able to provide them some basic stats. So let's do this one more time, just so we see how this works. We're going to do a quick search. We're going to choose a city or a zip code, an area, or whatever we want to do. Let me do the area of Florence this time and see if we get enough information. So I uncheck status. I just like to see, okay, we got a bunch of results. Good. Then I'm going to give it a sold. Let's see what we can get for the last six months in Florence. Oh, so I did 36 months. I want to do six months. Okay, 230, we have a bit more. So maybe I want to even go back three months. Personal preference, we'll just keep it for six. The market has slowed down. 
So I don't need to go back three months because the three months, the reason that's important with a really hot market is prices are going so fast, going up so high that if you include too large of a time frame, you're kind of skewing your results. So we're going to keep six months. I see my 230. I am doing the area foreign. So this is good. We're going to go up to CMA right up here. And then we're going to do our use all results. Statistical CMA, click on next. And after this one, we're gonna take a 10 minute break. I always like to take a break after about 50 minutes just because throw a lot of information at you. You can make your phone calls, check your emails, that kind of thing. We'll do a median calculation again. And again, this decides, do we want new construction? Maybe that's a field. We wanna see no or yes. What do we see on the different prices, the different days on market for new construction in Florence? Now, there may not be a lot of new construction because of this. It's Florence, but we can always come here. Yeah, so we don't see a lot of new construction, but that's fine. Just we'll close this and then we'll try a different field. Maybe fireplace, yes, no. You're kind of curious. Well, does a fireplace really add any value? Different elementary schools. Let's do bedrooms again. Click on view. So Florence, we see up to five bedrooms. Now, the most common is three. And so we see the median sold price, 170,000 for three bedroom or two bedrooms. And then we see 220 for three. So if they have the option to add another bedroom, do they put the money into it? Is it gonna get like, would 10,000 just converting the space into a bedroom really help the value? Well, that jumps by, $50,000. Now there are other variables, but if you want to get an idea of what well, we see with this one to two, that's not a huge difference in the median values, 145 to 170. So if it's going to cost almost that much money to do it. So this is where, where it gets interesting. Now you can do a regular CMA and comps, but if you just want to get some raw numbers and have an idea of what's going on, this could be something that you include in your listing presentation. So different bedrooms, let's do it for one more thing. We'll do it for, uh, let's see, what's a good one? Let's try for rooms total. Or actually with a property subtype. Again, there's so many different options. Some may make sense, some may not, but obviously not enough patio homes, not a lot of townhouses, but condos and single family have some pretty good. So we have 236 for single family, median, and then we have 177 for condos. And then you see your other stats. So basic number crunching. I'm a big fan of this report or this statistical CMA, but we are going to take a 10 minute break. I'm going to stop recording and then we'll start up again in 10 minutes. And we are back. So we are going to cover two more things. This class shouldn't go too much longer. I always plan for two hours when I do in-person classes because they're hands-on. I walk around the room. Well, online, it's a little different. So the next one we're going to cover is the market trends graph, or what used to be called the My Market, if you were familiar with that. So you'll notice that I have the market trends graph right here. But like I showed you before, if you star things or unstar them, they add them up to the top. So I can click on this or... What I like to do is I like to use that quick launch, as always, market trends graphs. Okay, so the market trends graphs is really cool because there's been a lot more functionality that's been added to it. Now, you'll notice that we have a bunch of different options up here, and then we have date ranges. Now, this will go back up to 10 years. Now, I've run it and had it timed out on me, so be wary if it's going to work for you or not. But this will go back up 10 years, and we see the show high data table. This will actually show the data that's getting displayed. So let's take a look at these different options. Now, this isn't like the market sermon where you can add or remove stuff from a wrench by clicking on that wrench. This actually, if you click on these down here, this will show you. So I'm going to keep the, the median values just because I prefer median values. So this is going to be the median days on market in the median CDOM. So this is on the graph, but the stats are still here. So if I run this, 
it'll show the DAs in the market and the cumulative data. So we're going to go through the different sections, and then I'm going to show you how you would customize this or get more granular. Now, if we do months of inventory, you'll notice that there's only one option. So the months of inventory, if I hover, so 2.2, again, it was still a very strong seller's market under five months, but it's now with the spring selling season, it's starting to get hotter again. And we see here, and again, I have all kinds of ranges that I could do this, but I believe you can run it for about 10, 10 straight years. Number of listings, same thing. Decide what I want to see by clicking or unclicking. And then we see, that's why we see less new, less active listings than new listings because it's calculated on the 15th for the active. So we have a bunch of stuff starting to go on the market, but it's going so quickly. That's why it's less. Price trends, this will actually has all kinds of options, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to do the sold median sale price. But if you scroll down here, you see the different things, however you want to track it. Sale list price, and so we see the original list price and the list price. So a lot of this is very similar to the, the market summary report that we saw previously. But that only lets us do one year at a time. This will let us do multiple years. So that's why I really like this one. And then the volume, again, whatever kind of volume we want to see. But volume always goes down in the winter and go, starts to go back up when it gets warm. So this right now is for the property type of residential. You may not realize that you could break this down into different sections unless you're watching that mouse behavior. I keep talking about this, but it's so important. So there's filters. It says property up residential. I click on this. It gives me the option to do a quick search or a save search. So we're going to do both. Let's do quick search. And then I can do residential. This is a custom one I did in my customs class. Filter. And so basically, this is very similar to what we see with other stat reports. If I wanted to do it for a specific city or county or something, maybe I just want to do this for the county of Kenton. And click on next. And so now what this is going to do is this is going to run this for the county of Kenton, just the county of Kenton. So we see the volume. If I were to go to days of market, again, very similar to what we see on the market summary, but it, it's broken down in different sections. And we can do that date range. I'm not going to do longer date ranges just because it takes a little while to load. And I want to keep this class short. So that was Kenton. That was for a quick search. We just had a handful of fields we can search on. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If I go to filters, I have the option to do save searches. And you'll notice all of my save searches right here. But these are searches that I've saved for my clients. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save a search specifically for stats. So watch what I do. I'm going to use my quick search. And let's do, so I did, it, I did it for Florence before. Let's do it for Florence again. I'll do the area of Florence. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Florence and let's do it for, say, three bedrooms. Now, the key thing about doing a report or sorry, a search for, for a stats report is we're going to uncheck status. Like I'm not even going to do sold because I don't know what date range I'm going to do it. So I'm going to just have this for houses in Florence for three bedrooms. I really want to see the stats. My client's looking for this, a house in Florence with three bedrooms, and maybe we'll even do two full baths. Numbers are still pretty high. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this search, save search. Now, this is a search for a stats report, and I explain this in the handout. We're not going to save and add a subscription. I'm just going to say this Florence, three bed, two full bath, four stats. And the reason I say four stats is whenever I see that, and I know that I've unchecked the status, because if I were to check the status, I would limit the options, the results that come back. Because if I just do active, but I'm looking for pended listings in one of those charts, I won't see anything. So I'm checking, unchecking status. So again, I have really high results. So that's fine. And then I'm going to click on save. So I've created a 
search specifically for a stats report. So Florence, the three bed, two full baths, four stats. So let's go back into our market trends gra graphs right here. Now, so it's going to run the last one I did for Kenton. Let's do filters. Go to my saved searches and let's find the Florence three bed, two full baths for stats. So what's really cool about this is, so we have this huge increase and then it drops back down. Now, if you get really granular, you might start to see some interesting data was which what we saw. But then it re immediately, re so in January, nothing was going fast. Now that could just be because there's not enough, in, you know, weren't certain houses or, or whatever it is. But so we see for days of market, let's do months of inventory. Again, things are really, really hot until it gets cold and then no one is looking. And then suddenly look down months of inventory, 0.14. So if your client is looking to buy a three bedroom, two full bath in Florence, there's nothing. And so let's go to number of listings. Look at this, active listings, new listings, pended, sold. Things are moving so, so quickly in Florence for that three bedrooms, two full baths. And again, we could plug in a, a price range as well, but generally if you're getting pretty granular, your three beds, your two, you use your other parameters, you may not even need to plug in price. So this is what we're seeing, sold price. So it's just kind of all over the place. When you get granular, you, you tend to see that, but sale list price ratio, original. So. Bounces around and then volume. So what's really cool about this is remember in the market summary, I was able to use a map shape and just choose the map shape. Well, you can't use a map shape here per se, but what you would do instead is you just go in your filters. Now go, I'm gonna go into quick search. You'll notice, scroll down. Hmm, I don't see anything for map shapes. So all you're doing is if you want to do map shapes, you go to filters and you're going to use a save search instead. Well, remember that map shape that I drew for the market summary? Let's use that here. So what I would have to do is click on quick search. I can't pull up that map shape unless it's in a search. So well, let's just pull it up. MLS number, address or map overlay, north of 275 by river. So I'm going to use this now as a search. Got to... So let's uncheck status. There we go. And so what we're going to do is we're going to save this because this map shape is just like any other search parameter, bedrooms, bathrooms, whatever I want. I'm going to click on save, save my search. Give a sec to load. And so I'm just going to call this one north of 275 by river four stats. Again, I'm plugging in the four stats because that tells me no status is selected. I this is not some for a client. This is not even like something I'm following. I just want to see some stats. We're going to click on save. So let's pull up that market trends graphs, or I could use this again. We'll go into filters. I'm looking for my save searches. So we did that one for Florence, but this time we want to do one with our map shape so instead of using Florence or a city or an area I did a map shape and again I could plug in three bedrooms two baths you know new construction you could do whatever you want this is now just like any other search the key thing to remember though for searches for stats is no status is selected click on filter and so okay there's the volume let's let's go back from the start we'll do days on market so it's kind of bounced around so if there's not a lot of houses, things will bounce around. Like people put high-end properties dur up during certain months. Things take longer. Months of inventory. But what's interesting about this is months of inventory. So close to a neutral market back in December, which things do get slower when it gets colder. But for listings. So active listings and new. So things are... It's not like we were seeing other places where things are immediately going, they're going pending. See our price trends. Sold me in sale. Things have bounced around, but give you a good idea. 
And you can always go back. If you wanted to go back five years for this particular area, you could do so. Sale to list price ratio, bouncing around, but the original is the one that I always like to see. And then here's the volume. So interesting stats, go to export if you want to export all downloadable data. So if you want to see everything that's in all of these different graphs, export the downloadable data. Pull this up. There we go. Here are all the columns that show the different things there. And then you could email it or you could click on print. And so it's going to print whatever screen that you're on. So let's do that again. Let's see if we can print on one page. Okay, so, so this is the volume. That's why we're seeing volume. If I were to switch to, say, number of listings, and then I go to print. Let's do it without two pages, print market trends. There you go. And it will actually tell me up at the top what my search parameters were for this particular stats report. So again, you're dealing with a client who's very into stats or you yourself like to play around with the stats. This gives you some really interesting information. So that was the market trends graphs. Otherwise it was formerly known as the My Market, but Flex really expanded it before. It used to be just three years. Now it's up to 10 years. And it, it's very similar to the market summary. A lot of the same stuff. One of the difference is it uses months of inventory versus absorption rate, but everything else is basically the same, but just a lot more data that's available. So the final one we're going to do is called the year over year comparison. And if I go to market, this isn't under market trends graphs. This is actual under the report section. So again, year over year comparison in the market trends reports. So your day activity or your over year comparison. I really like this one because if you run this report, it gives you an idea of, you could do it graphically, or if you just want to have numbers, let's just do the, the date range here, begin date, and we'll do the end date for this residential, group it by area, and, or you could do a filter, but let's do next. What 